Yo! Oh, what's going on? Oh, shit. You know what's going on. Better make sure you're actually alive, dude. <clears throat> yeah, let me check, dude. Let me check the group. He was happening. People are probably going to be like, what the fuck is going on? Why dude, it's just, it's just, Sebastian, we just grind so much harder than everybody else, dude. dude we, there's a reason why we are about to do. We're just grinding, dude. Like, dude, do you want to talk about our numbers or just or just leave that alone? No, dude. That would scare everybody, man. That would, that'd be pretty frightening. Dude, I don't see you on live. What are you talking about, dude? I don't see it. Oh, oh we have three viewers. We have to be live, dude. Yo! What up? Who's on here? Guys, it's late. It's 8.43 here in Nueva York. I speak a little bit of Spanish. That is correct. Drop a comment. Let us know you're here. Let us know you're alive and kicking. Drop a comment. Give us a hashtag alive. Give us a hashtag something. Something. Let us know you're here. We got three people on. Oh, there we are, dude. We got William. We got Dean. The homies are on, brother. What's up? What's up? What's up? I think we should give people like another 30 to 60 seconds because we are kind of going live just on a whim, and I know people don't expect that. So um, who – let's see. Who's on right now? Let us know what you guys are up to at 8.44 in the evening, at least where I am. 6.44 in Brian's weird fucking town. Um, Dude, you want to know something crazy, Sebastian? With that, uh, William and I are doing a little interview over in his group in like two hours, man. Two hours from now? Yeah. Nice, dude. All right, so let's yeah. see. Saying comment. Oh, yeah, it's two hours from my time. So. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see who the fuck is on here, bro. Who's on here? Talk some shit. We got eight people. And only two comments. Everybody be dropping a hashtag live, man. Drop them comments, man. Drop them comments. Let us know you're here. Yeah. Facebook sucks, so we need to get more engagement on this shit so people know we're live. There's like – how many people are in this group? There's almost like a 1,000 people, and like 15 of them will see this live, which is just – it's disgusting. It's just gross. Facebook is uh, something else. All right, man. We got 15 minutes. We better jump into it pretty soon here. Probably get going, right? Yeah, man. I'm going to pull this up right now. Dude. Oh, that's why I can find it on my phone because we're live in the group. Yeah, yeah. This isn't on my personal uh, this time. Cool. Dane Williams, how you doing? Oh, Rob Quinn is on the live. Oh, oh, shit. The OG, motherfucker. Dude, uh, Rob's going to like this one. If he's still here, brother, he's going to like this topic, man. It's going to get him jacked up. Let's Should I jump into it? I'm ready, bro. I'm jacked up. I shouldn't even be this. I shouldn't have this much energy at 846, bro, but I do. So let's do it. Okay, man. So one of the most common things that you and I both get asked is how do I get over the price objection? Like everybody thinks that 3K a month is too expensive. And they'll say things like, oh, well, like how do I find better prospects? Like what's wrong with my prospect? I need to stop talking to small businesses and they blame it on everything other than the fact that they don't know how to position the price, right? Like it's never their fault. <laughs> it's, it's always the business's fault. So we wanted to jump on live and talk about why that's some major bullshit and talk about why really like any business in the world can afford what you have to offer. Like, Mm -hmm. Two quick stories to illustrate this point. One, my first gym client that I ever signed, they were in the negative month to month. Their business was doing negative dollars, right? Like what worse prospect could there be? But we still signed a $7,000 contract with them, right? And so one of the things that all of you have to get right in your head about money is that the a dollar, whatever in whatever currency, is all contextual, right? Like the monetary value of a piece of paper, it, it's not real. 
Like I can hold up a hundred dollar bill and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And as humans, we decide the value that a dollar represents. Let me, let me help you understand what the, like what this means, right? There's people that love Yeezy boost tennis shoes and they're willing to spend $400 on a pair of Yeezy boost tennis shoes, even though they do the exact same thing as a $40 pair of shoes. Right. And so in terms of like actual tangible value, there's really not much difference. Uh, they might like be cooler or whatever. They do look good though. They look sexy as fuck. Yeah. They, I bet Rob has a pair. <laughs> he, he'd be repping those. Um, but like we decide that they're worth $400, right? There's human beings in the USA that put a television that brings them like nothing into their life on a credit card and are willing to go into debt to buy a TV. Mm. Like to me, that's the most mind boggling concept in the world. But to some people it's worth going in debt to own a TV. Does that make sense, Sebastian, the way I explained it right there? So we decide the value of the dollar. Yeah. hundred percent. Dude, can you tell the story about the, um, about the, the diamonds thing with the lady? Yeah, I've been reading an awesome book talking about human psychology and influence and things like that. So in this book, they tell the story of a small jewelry store in Mesa, Arizona. And it's a super popular tourist attraction. They get a lot of traffic into their jewelry store from tourists. So the manager had these um, topaz pieces of jewelry that she could, she just couldn't sell. Nobody was buying them. She tried like putting them in the front glass. She tried having her sales rep push them more. Um, she tried to offer like buy one, get one. So just like nobody was biting on the topaz jewelry. So she was going out of town one week and she was just like sick of it. She's like, I got to get rid of this jewelry. So she wrote a note to her store manager and said, make them half off and put them in the front display case. The store manager read it wrong and doubled the price and put them in the front display case. So it went from being, let's say like the price didn't say $500 to $1,000 and they sold out within 24 hours. Boom. Because as humans, we are like, oh, these are very expensive. That means like they're extremely valuable. I need to buy them. The problem is, is nobody looks at Facebook ads that way. I wish they did, but they don't. So the question is, how can I help business owners associate <laughs> the proper evaluation to, let's say, a 2K a month Facebook ad campaign? How, how do we do that, Sebastian? That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. Because if you can do that, you can sell anything, right? So you can help, if you can have a perfect value, you can sell anything. You can sell ice to a fucking Eskimo. All right. Yeah. You Listen, just have to do the value. I want to say something first before I talk about like the how and all that shit, which is what everybody wants to hear. It's never about the price. Never. Price, as Brian said, is not a thing. Okay. It's a smoke screen. It's a shadow objection. Okay, if, so, if a business owner says to you, well, you know what, that's a lot of money. We don't have that or we don't have that in our budget. Or that's just too much for us. They are lying through their teeth right to your face, right to your face. And it's covering up for something deeper and underlying true objection that you haven't worked out and ironed out with them yet. And more times than not, what I've seen as the real objection is that like, it's a couple things. Number one. They don't understand the value, so they don't see – this is probably the biggest one. They don't see why this – whatever you're offering to them is valuable. And now you're probably like, okay, well, what does valuable mean? It means how can it solve their problems, mm -hmm. okay? Because the only thing people care about is getting their problems solved. And the only reason why people ever take action on anything, not just buying shit. The only reason why people do anything in life is out of two things, pain or fear. It could be the fear of missing out. It could be the fear of not being good enough, not keeping up with the Joneses, the pain of having this problem, whatever the fuck it is. Okay, it's the only reason why people do anything. And if you can't help a business owner see why whatever it is you claim you can do is going to resolve that pain for them, they will never, ever buy from you, even if the price is 10 fucking dollars. 
Okay. Mm. So it doesn't matter. The price is not a thing. You just don't know how to convey the value and help them understand why and how whatever, again, whatever it is you're offering is going to solve that problem for them. Okay. Because look at it this way. I always look at things as very simple. Okay. How can I break it down to the simplest form possible? Right. So the business owner says, I don't have the money for that. Okay. There's two things, right? One, again, that's a cover up or two, they actually don't have the money. Now, if a business, like an actual operating business with expenses, employees, all that shit, if they genuinely, like as in, if you look at their business bank account, they don't have enough money to pay you for marketing, then they should not even be in business, okay? And honestly, the amount of businesses you're going to come across that are in that situation is very low, which means more often than not, it's the former, which is you haven't solved their true problem. Okay. And so when you spit out some fucking number, like $2,000 a month, they're like, what the fuck? I don't even know what you're going to do for me. Okay. That's why I just can't stand when people get caught up on the price. Like, Hey, I had a meeting and they said it was too much money. I don't know what to do. And they cry like a little fucking baby. Oh, it's the prospect's fault. It's, no, it's not. It's not. It's never the fucking prospect's fault. Right. It's never the price. It's your fault. And by you crying and whining about, oh, well, they told me it's too much money. I didn't know what to say. That's a fucking cop out. Okay. Because you don't want to admit that you suck at sales. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You know me. I am not going to spoon feed you motherfuckers. So let's talk about what most people default to. Which okay. Is figure it out. Can you read that? Let me see. What are you saying over here, dude? It's, it's like the classic oh, thousand yeah. management, thousand ad spend, 100 leads, 10 conversions, 10 times a thousand equals 10,000. There's a guaranteed 500% return on investment. No questions asked. Mm. We'll the deal. Why doesn't that work? Like most people think, oh, if I can just show them this cute little equation, right? That it's like a guaranteed 500% ROI. Why don't they just sign automatically? Sebastian, like it's all right there. Proof's in the numbers. You would think, right, man? You would you think. think that's really all you have to do. Is just show them those numbers and wait for them to sign. If it was that simple, man, everybody would have a six, multiple five figure month, six figure agency. You could even, dude, you could even guarantee those a hundred leads and they still wouldn't sign. Hundred <clears throat> percent. So, Brian, you can just chime in and cut me off if you like. But really, guys, what it comes down to is what people want to know. And I'm going to tell you this from my personal experience. The only time I've ever bought into something is when I thought. Not just thought, but felt because emotion plays a huge part of the sales process and in the way in which people make decisions. Okay. And this is where a lot of people fall short is they just only sell on logic. Well, hey, if you give me this amount of money, I can bring you this amount back. Right. Doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Doesn't matter. Because they hear the same shit. For me, the only time I ever bought into something is when I felt that the other person I was talking to deeply deeply and intimately understood my real problems and my actual situation sometimes even better than I did mm -hmm. and more intimately than I even knew my own situation and problems. Only then do I feel like I need to hire this person or I need to buy from this person. And it's not about the logic. It's not about the technical, well, we're going to put this here and we're going to do this ad or we're going to run this page. No one gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. How can you solve their problem? Not only that, but do you understand their problems? Do you know their actual real problems? Do you know what that feels like? Can you show them that? Can you convey to them that you, know, you understand their problems? And can you also convey to them that you can provide them with a solution and those problems can go away? Yep. Exactly, man. So let's talk about how people can take like this principle that we've talked about. We've blown up their ideology around money and like the sales process. And now they're just thinking like, shit, my whole like sales process is reliant on those logistical numbers. And like all these gurus tell me that I do need to use those numbers. Like what now? Mm. First off, like the numbers are obviously a part of the sales conversation. Like numbers will always be a part of a business transaction. The biggest thing is they should not be your main selling point. If numbers are your main selling point, you're going to lose, especially in the social media marketing game, right? So the biggest thing that you need to learn how to do 
is one, you probably need to flip your mindset about sales mm. going from I'm here to take their money to I'm here to consult and lead them to a better life. And then the entire process that you take a lead through needs to be geared around the principle of I need to lead them to the promised land, meaning I need to help them see their problems and I need to hold their hand and be their guide to get them there. That sounds like super high level, like unhelpful information. But if you think about it, it's the like it's the most important sales principle in the world. Yeah. Right. So what does that look like? You're in a meeting. I, I'll give you an example. I work primarily with real estate agents for my marketing agency. So I could just say, hey, Mr. Realtor, Sebastian, what's uh, I noticed you don't have a website. What's up with that? And uh, how much do you think that not having a website is costing you on a monthly basis? Don't know. Don't care, my man. Um, how? Oh, I uh, I did some research about like your SEO, and did you know you're missing out on seven thousand potential clicks a month? Nope. Oh, okay. Um, well, we do lead gen, Sebastian, and I, for a thousand dollars, I can generate you a hundred leads, which is like three new sales for your real, which is like ten thousand dollars. How does that sound? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. See, yeah, like, that's so email hard. with some more info. Email me. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Or I could say, hey, Mr. Sebastian, like, I I took a look at your at your business record. It looks like you're mostly working with first time home buyers. Tell me about that. Oh, you want to stop working with first time home buyers and move up to higher to selling higher income homes? Okay. What What do you feel like is stopping you from doing that right now? Oh, your branding isn't where it needs to be. Oh, interesting. I'm going to take note of that. Okay. Um, your branding isn't good. Got it. Thanks for telling me that. What have you done to improve your branding? Oh, you've tried posting on Facebook and that didn't work. Okay. Got it. Like I hear that a lot. Don't worry. Okay, great. Like awesome. How do you feel like, like your sales is going like with the leads that you do have, like where are you getting leads currently? Oh, you're only getting referrals. Yeah. I understand. Like that sucks as a realtor. Like, does it worry you that you have zero predictability right now? Oh, it does. It does stress you out. Tell me more about that. Like, why does it? Yeah. Oh, you have a family. Oh, how many kids do you have? Oh, really? So like what you're like, so you're doing this for your family. This is the main source of income. Great. Like, does it like, like you said, it scares you not having predictability in your income with the family on the line. Got it. And branding is a problem for you. Got it. Do you see what I'm doing here? Right? Is this making so, sense? So what can the for the people that are watching live now, the people that are going to watch this in the replay? This is the consultative sales process. This isn't selling. You don't have to sell anything. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is have a conversation and help somebody make the best decision for themselves. Yeah. That's so that call, Sebastian, that call would end with me saying, okay, great. Like we want to double revenue in 2019. <clears throat> We're not on track to do that right now, which is okay. Based off of our conversation today, we need to increase your personal brand and grow your attention. We need to help you clean up your online presence through most likely the form of a better website. And we need to also like help you get more uh, people that want to talk to you. Cool. Makes sense. Let me put together a marketing plan surrounding these goals. Let me put together a proposal and what I think we should do from here on out. And we'll move forward with that. Does that make sense? Cool. Perfect. We'll set up a meeting. Boom. That easy. Boom. So let's circle back around guys to the topic uh, of the live. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta hop off soon right now anyway. Okay. So it's gonna, we're going to do about another, what would you say? Five minutes, man. Cause I, yeah. I got to knock out. We got to do some war room fucking plotting our domination after this. Um, so just to recap guys real quick, cause we do got to jump off here. Um, it's never about the price. Okay. Now if you yourself go into your meetings and your sales conversations, I should just say conversations, not even sales conversations. Cause you're just talking to people. If subconsciously you're worried about them worrying about the price, what do you think is going to happen? They're mm -hmm. going to worry about the price. So you're going to reflect your subconscious thoughts on the people you're talking to. 
Dude, I think we, Sebastian, I think we should just stop and do a part two to this tomorrow night and talk about the whole mirroring principle because like, we need to talk about that and it's it's a whole nother conversation. So cool. let's talk about it tomorrow night. Cool, cool, do cool. All right, guys. That's it. We got to jump off. We got to plot our world domination and uh, talk to you guys soon. But bam.